Okay, so I posted a fly, this one in particular, uh, and I had a lot of people ask me how I got the ribbing and all of that stuff into the abdomen of the fly. So I'm gonna do a video on just showing you how to do that. Um, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. So first you need to determine the hook that you want. Uh, now doing these kind of extended body mayflies, it's a very popular choice to go with like an, a curved emerger hook or something of that nature. Uh, next, you need a piece of uh, vinyl tubing. Uh, you can see there's a little hole at the end. Um, and we're going to size all this here in just a second. Um, we don't want anything that's curved like this. And so when you go to cut these, you want a pair of flat blade scissors. Don't use anything serrated because it's going to jack up the ends. And then you won't be able to use it very well. So these two dots here uh, represent where I want my... Uh, sorry for the crane fly, <laughs> but uh, this represents where I want my uh, body to come in and where I want my tie-off point to be. So I'm leaving enough room for my head, so on and so forth. And so you can just make those marks with a Sharpie. You can wrap a little bit of hackle around there and say, hey, this is the point that I, I, I want. Um, I used a big Sharpie on this one because the uh, fine tip Sharpie, which I actually recommend to do this, doesn't show up very well. So you're going to take the tubing that you just cut. You're going to take uh, a fine tip uh, Sharpie and you're going to uh, make the marks, these front two marks on the actual tube itself <clears throat> where you want your cuts to be. And then next, um, what we want to do is just flip this guy over <clears throat> and we want to make a mark that's close to the end uh, you can just kind of guesstimate where you want it to be it doesn't have to be perfect uh, we just need some room for some scissors to get in there and my fine tip pen's not working very well so I'll just use a thick sharpie just to so I can show you okay so that's it and you want to make this mark all the way around uh, the back end of the tube because that's where it's going to be cut all right so <clears throat> Next, you're going to take a sequin pen, and you're going to get this in your the jaws of your vise at an angle that you like. It's comfortable to you because you need to... Oh, this happened last time, so I'm going to zoom out. So you're seeing a little optical illusion of my ring light. So, But you need something that's like at the angle that you like to work at. Now, I, like, I kind of like to work down a little bit more. So I angle these down a little bit. And uh, before or after you put it in the vise, you want to take some wax and wax your uh, sequin pin just a little bit. Get a, a paper towel and a lighter and just quickly torch it so that that starts to melt down. And I need to adjust. I apologize because I'm not a, a professional videographer uh, but I want to try to adjust this to where I can zoom back in so you can see it you'll see a little bead of wax pick up and uh, just take it and dab and that's all we need we need uh, that what that's going to allow is the tube to slide on and off uh, very easily so we're going to take the part of the tube that we've made the one mark on and that wax is going to allow us to slide that tube easily onto the sequin pin. And we want to line the needle up. If you can see that. Right there. We want to line the needle up. Here, I'll move this up a little bit so it's a little higher in the view. But we want to line that needle up so that it's at our first mark or the inner mark. Now what you can do is you can take your, again, non-serrated scissors and we're going to go to the second mark and we're going to cut all that stuff off. And next what you need is a pair of, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, <laughs> shot the video four times. <laughs> Hemostats. And you want to put them in your predominant hand. So I'm right-handed, so they're going to be in my right hand. I'm going to take a lighter, and I'm going to light it, and I'm just going to wiggle this around in there to heat these up. 
and we don't want to get it overly hot and now I'm going to come directly on and line my tips up with my top black mark gently press you don't want to over press uh, because it'll start to melt things uh, that's actually why we put the wax on the uh, sequin pen and so when you turn this a little bit you'll come to a point where you can see that there's like a straight edge you can see that the little ridges going down and uh, now there's a flat part uh, that doesn't have the ridges now we can do it again and that's actually showing you why we put that uh, mark up front I'm doing this out of my normal reach but we, now we can line those up and what that's going to do is it'll allow that marking to get pretty much all the way around uh, the entire shaft if you can see that and so it's it's somewhat continuous if you it, otherwise it's taking the guesswork out of where it needs to be so we can turn our sequin pen to the side and we're gonna slide this back on to our first mark and what you need here is a double-sided razor blade that's very sharp don't use one that's you've used before and we're just going to pinch that on there and we're going to gently take this and slice between the two until we get to the pin and so what that's done now is that's created a tie-on point for us sorry my fingers are in the way and uh, that's going to be where the the final tie-in point on the hook and where the fly is going to go or the extended body is going to go to actually into the fly now we can take all of this out and we can take our, oh, there it is we can take our non serrated scissors and now we're going to cut this black point out so uh, you can cut it at an angle to kind of give the represent representation of an actual mayfly or you can uh, they've got that little slant on them if you can kind of see that I know it's like again I'm not a videographer so uh, but now we've got a tie-in point and uh, everything else so uh, at this point you can decide what you want to do as far as putting in a tail uh, if you wanted to uh, I want to try to keep this short so you can flip it around I know I took the sequin pen out but I guess it'll just be easier to put it back in and you'll put it you'll stick this in on the cut side that you just sliced uh, you can take a, a separate sequin pen and um, just rub it in a little bit of um, UV resin pinch it tight and just kind of put it in there and kind of swirl it through to coat that with some UV resin uh, then find your tailing material in this case I'm just going to use some CDL or some Coq de Leon because it's nice and fine fiber I can get more in there um, depending on the fiber that you use whether it's hand or whatever you may I mean you'll have to play around with this part a little bit uh, so once you have that you want to cut off anything that was attached to the actual uh, stem and uh, it's not connected so it's free in your fingers I like to put a little spittle on it and now I can slide this in and if uh, one or two flop out it's not a, usually a big deal except now I'm doing this backwards from what I nor normally do but we okay we get get the tips wet or the cut ends wet and slide it in and of course it's not going to do it because I'm shooting a video but you'll get the point I'm trying to keep it short so all right well I got a few in there okay and then you can take your UV torch I'm not trying to make it perfect I'm just trying to show you how I do it uh, then you can take your UV torch and torch it even them up I guess a little bit uh, like so and then one of the benefits to having the cut end at, or the slope tapered side is you can actually take uh, a drop of uh, UV resin and you want to use very little so we don't add too much weight 
because it will add weight. But uh, you take just a little tiny drop. Come on, you. I don't edit anything, so you're seeing the real me screw up, and I try to plan for these things. Uh, but uh, it doesn't always work out so well. And I get tired of shooting videos 15 times to fake something. So, I'm going to show you the, the real deal. So you put a little bit on there. It actually works better if it's tipped upside down. Uh, but it's out of camera range again, so whatever. And uh, you do a number like that. Now, if you want to uh, add color, you can tie it in just like this. And so now we have the actual uh mayfly tail made you can uh, add color simply by adding wire uh, and i like to i like to do this because it actually adds a tie-in point and gives me something solid to uh, connect uh, plus it gives me the added benefit of being able to move that tail so well and colors and everything too you can kind of play around with color depending on your tubing and whatever so now you can slide that wire up inside and you'll get a little bit different color situation depending on the uh, tubing and the all that stuff and uh, the color wire uh, when you go to set the when you go to set the wire inside the tube what I'll do is I'll take uh, some Loctite gel super glue I'll squeeze a little bit into the actual tube itself and dip the dip the wire in there so there's just like a little thin coat on there and because I got a bunch of crap in my way, my things fell out there, my tail fell out. Then you can slide this in uh, and just pinch gently, and then that's going to lock your wire onto your tube. So at the end of the day, uh, a hollow tube that's ready for wire should look about like this uh, with the ribbing and everything. I was able to take a little bit more time on this one. Um, but uh, there's a few techniques that I just showed where you can essentially make a jig out of everything and uh, knock off numerous ones at a time. And so the end result, uh, once you do it, it'll be, I mean, however you want to tie your fly and whatever you're trying to tie, will look something like this. Let me back out and angle my camera up again, sorry. It'll look something like this, and so when a fish hits it and it knocks your tail all out like that, you can because the wire's inside and the wire's tied in, you can just simply realign it to uh, whatever angle that you want. You can put a crazy kink in there, or lay it flat, whatever you want to do. So uh, it's way longer than I wanted to shoot a how-to video, but um, I hope you play around with it. It's a really fun technique to use. Um, but uh, this one just took a little bit of time to explain um, so if you like the videos always appreciate a thumbs up subscribe and share uh, I do plan on doing a video actually on how I tied this fly uh, I had a bunch of people ask about that and so I'm gonna do that other than that same as always happy tying everybody and take care